Welcome and thank you for your interest in our talk. We will in the next few minutes discuss our work on actively secure fine-grained access structures from isogeny assumptions. This was joint work with Fabio Campos from Rhein-Main University in Wiesbaden. Let us first set the stage. We will be moving in the context of hard homogeneous spaces today. The concept of hard homogeneous spaces was first introduced by Kuvenje in 2006. Such space consists of a set E and a group G combined with an action asterisk. That combines an element of E with an element of G and produces another element of the set E. The mapping asterisk has some important properties that we will make use of in this work. First, we have compatibility. That is, if we take two elements, G and G prime, from G and an arbitrary element of E, it does not matter whether we first apply G prime and then G to E or if we first combine G and G prime and then apply them to E. Second, we have the identity property. This means that when we take the identity element of G and combine it with an element of E, it stays unchanged. This must only hold for the identity element I of G. And third, we consider transitivity. This says that for any two elements of E, there exists, exists exactly one G in G, capital G that connects them. We will use the bracket notation throughout this work, for which we fix an element small g in capital G and a prime, uh, of a prime order p. Um, thus, for any uh, s in z modulo p and any e in calligraphic e, we then abbreviate g to the s combined with e as s in brackets e. The compatibility property uh, then of course gives us the remarked uh, equality. In a hard homogeneous space, we assume that the group action inverse problem is hard to break. This means that given two elements E and E prime, the probability of providing a G that connects them both is negligible in the implied security parameter. We shall quickly cover secret sharing schemes since everyone is likely to be familiar with the concept. We take a set of shareholders P1 to Pn. Among these, uh, a secret can be shared via the secret sharing protocol. And an authorized set of shareholders can reconstruct a secret from their shares via the re reconstruction protocol. In the case of Shamir sharing, in which we give the basic version of our protocol, this means that any set with as many members as a fixed threshold can reconstruct the secret. We define the set of super authorized sets of shareholders, that is, sets from which we can kick an arbitrary shareholder and they are still authorized. We shall see the, necess the necessity uh, of this definition later on. Uh, now let us have a look at the definition of, key, of a key exchange mechanism. We have two parties, Alice and Bob. Alice has a secret and a public key. Alice publishes the public key and keeps the secret key to herself. Bob can now take the public key and run the so-called encapsulation protocol on it. This gives him a key K and a ciphertext C that he can send to Alice. Alice in turn runs the decapsulation on the ciphertext with her secret key SK and also gets a key K. The keys uh, they both receive should coincide. We will take a closer look at the decapsulation protocol specifically in this work. Now, a key exchange mechanism in the context of a hard homogeneous space could look like this. For key generation, we sample the secret key from Z modulo P. And the public key is simply SK applied to a publicly known and fixed uh, E0. For the encapsulation protocol, we sample a random B from G. The ephemeral key K is simply B connected to the public key and the ciphertext is B applied to E0. Now, for decapsulation, um, we simply apply the secret key to the ciphertext, which gives us the key K. Let us consider the following setting. Alice does not hold the secret key herself, but it is shared in a secret ca uh, sharing scheme. This does have some advantages. For example, uh, she cannot lose the key or leak it. But on the other hand, she must always ask the shareholders for the key if she wants to decapsulate a ciphertext. Or does she? It turns out that actually she doesn't. 
DeFeo and Maya proposed a protocol in a Shamir setting in which a decapsulation can be executed by the shareholders without reconstructing the secret key. For that, we assume that an authorized set of shareholders, say as prime, comes together and receives the ciphertext as input. Each shareholder holds a share, S1 and S4, uh, depicted here, uh, of the secret key. They fix a turn order and one after the other apply their share to the respective input. More precisely, the first shareholder applies L1 as prime uh, times S1 to the ciphertext and passes the result on to the second shareholder. He in turn um, applies L2 as prime multiplied by S2 and so on. Um, in this context, Li as prime denotes the Lagrange interpolation coefficient. The last shareholder's output is then the result of the decapsulation. Um, but why does this work? We take a quick look at the so-called threshold group action. We see that the result of this uh, round-robin approach turns out to be simply the reconstructed secret key to the ciphertext. So actually, this is the previous decapsulation, but executed by a set of shareholders instead of the owner of the key. DeFeo and Meyer showed that this protocol is simulatable, even if we suspect that their proof was not, not entirely correct, the statement nevertheless holds true. Their approach has two nice features. This is, uh, you do not need all shareholders, but only an authorized set. And the turn order is not fixed, but can be arranged in any suitable way. The problem, however, is that their protocol is only passively secure. That is, a misbehaving shareholder, as we depicted here, cannot be detected. One, because the share is obviously unknown to all other parties, and two, it cannot be computed from this input and output. We will use two measures to achieve active security in the decapsulation protocol. First, we have a zero knowledge proof of knowledge in the context of a hard homogeneous space. For that, we take a secret S and a list of tuples E, I and EI prime in E. Each EI prime results from applying S to EI. A prover thus proves knowledge of S beyond reasonable doubt without revealing S. The protocol for this is non-interactive. And second, we use a piecewise verifiable proof. Consider for that a statement X that consists of a pair E0, E1 and a list of SIs in Z modulo P. A piecewise verifiable proof proves knowledge of a polynomial F in Z modulo P that connects E0 and E1 and also interpolates the values as i. The protocol for this, again, is non-interactive. So, the challenges that we face are the following. 1. The PVP, as stated before and discussed by Boyens et al., does not consider the threshold setting. It always proves each interpolation point and does not consider that not a secret, but a multiple of it is used in the decapsulation. We need to amend that to fit our needs. And 2. We must marry the zero-knowledge protocol and the PVP with the decapsulation protocol in order to achieve active security. And three, we should prove that the protocol that we get from this is simulatable, as the original protocol by DeFeo and Meyer was. We skip the precise modified protocols, since they do not offer much insight, the changes we had to make were mostly on the technical side. Now, for our key exchange mechanism, we need a key generation protocol, an encapsulation and a decapsulation protocol. Let us start with the key generation protocol. This looks quite a bit different from the one we showed before. We, sh uh, we apply what we call a two-level sharing. That is, we let the dealer sample the secret key and compute the public key as before. The secret key is then shared among P1 to Pn, but each share of the secret key is shared once more by the dealer so that each shareholder eventually receives his share as i of the secret key, the polynomial fi with which his share was shared once more, and a share of each other share of the secret key. The encapsulation protocol stays unchanged, since the secret key that has been shared does not concern it. The decapsulation protocol, on the other hand, looks quite different from the one that we sketched before. We show the turn of one shareholder PI that is engaged in an execution of the decapsulation protocol. Let us say that PI is the case shareholder in the turn order, and that a superauthorized set of shareholders executes the decapsulation. Now, pi gets ek-1 as input with 
either e0 being the ciphertext or ek-1 being the output of the previous shareholder. If ek-1 is not in e, then pi simply stops and the protocol aborts. Otherwise, pi samples a random rk from the set e and computes rk prime by applying li as asterisk times si to rk. Now, pi generates a piecewise verifiable proof that proves the knowledge of the polynomial fi so that li as asterisks times fi of 0 connects rk and rk prime and interpolates the values fi of j of all other participating shareholders. Furthermore, pi computes his contribution to the decapsulation, um, that is ek, as he did in the passively secure protocol. And he computes the zero knowledge proof that shows that he knows li as asterisk times si and also that both ek and ek minus 1 as well as rk prime and rk are connected by it. In combination, this proves as R that rk and rk prime and ek minus 1 and ek are connected by the same element and that the connecting element coincides with the one that was shared by the dealer. And as a fourth step, all other participants verify the proofs that PI has published. If PI misbehaved, the protocol is restarted and PI is excluded from future runs. The last shareholder eventually outputs E um, as the result of the decapsulation. Our key exchange mechanism has the following qualities. It is in CPA. This means that given a public key PK, a ciphertext, and two potential keys, an adversary cannot distinguish which one is linked to the ciphertext. We skip the precise security game here. Also, our decapsulation protocol is simulatable. We proved this in reducing um, the group action inverse problem to distinguishing the output of a concrete simulator from a real transcript in a series of game hops. And third, the decapsulation protocol is actively secure in that if a shareholder can provide an incorrect input to the decapsulation without being detected by the other participants, then he can either break the zero knowledge proof or the piecewise verifiable proof. We come to a little bonus that we derive from our key exchange mechanism. We apply the Fiat Shamir transform to our scheme to obtain an actively secure signature scheme. One may wonder why one would need an actively secure signature scheme. After all, if a signature was computed incorrectly, this can obviously be seen from the verification of the signature failing. But in a setting where multiple shareholders participate in generating a signature, this does not identify the shareholder who misbehaved. Our protocol can do just that. For a signature scheme, we need three uh, protocols. A key generation protocol, a signing protocol, and a verifying protocol. We simply keep the key gen protocol from the key exchange mechanism, that is, a dealer samples secret key, computes and publishes a public key, and shares the secret key among the shareholders in a two-level sharing. We then apply the fiat shamir transform to our decapsulation protocol. Traditionally, this transform is to be applied to, an, to identification schemes, not to key exchange mechanisms. One can, however, consider our decapsulation protocol as an identification scheme in that a successful decapsulation identifies the ex executing set of shareholders as authorized, that is, it holds the secret key. This gives us a non-interactive signing protocol. The verifying protocol comes naturally with the signing protocol. We come to our last contribution and, to be honest, the initial motivation for this work. We discuss which secret sharing schemes we can instantiate our key exchange mechanism with other than the traditional Shamir scheme. For that, we first define the characteristics that a secret sharing scheme must have to be compatible with our protocols. First, it needs independent reconstruction. This means that the input of a shareholder in reconstructing a secret must not depend on what the other shareholders gave as input. We need this since each share is hidden due to the group action inverse problem, so no participant can see any share but his own. Second, we need self-contained reconstruction. This enables the two-level sharing for which the shares of a secret live in the same space as the secret, so that they can be shared once more. 
And third, we need the secret sharing scheme to be um, zero, compatible with the zero knowledge proof and the piecewise verifiable proof in the hard homogeneous space setting. Let us have a quick look at some examples of secret sharing schemes and see whether they are compatible with our key exchange mechanism. Shamir secret sharing is obviously compatible since we gave our protocols in the context of it. Um, Tassa gave a fascinating extension of Shamir's approach in his hierarchical threshold secret sharing scheme. It is also based on polynomial interpolation, yet the lower in the hierarchy you go, the higher the degree of the derivation of the original polynomial becomes, of which a shareholder gets interpolation points. It is directly compatible with our protocols, be it with some tweaks to the PVP and the zero knowledge proof. Damgard and Torbeck proposed a secret sharing scheme in which integer secrets rather than secrets from that set P are shared. The confidentiality of the scheme is only computational, so we deem it incompatible with our protocol. And the simplest of all secret sharing schemes, that is additive secret sharing, is incompatible with our key exchange mechanism since it cannot provide any super authorized sets and therefore does not enable a piecewise verifiable proof. In conclusion, we proposed an actively secure key exchange mechanism in which the secret key is shared among a set of shareholders that enables decapsulation without reconstructing the key. We proved the decapsulation protocol simulatable and actively secure, that is, an adversary cannot learn any information from an execution and cannot interfere with, uh, by providing false input without detection. The key exchange mechanism is also indistinguishable under the chosen message attack, that is, nothing can be learned uh, about an encapsulated key from the corresponding ciphertext. For this aim, we transferred the PVP and the zero knowledge proof to the threshold setting. We furthermore transformed the key exchange mechanism into a signature scheme with active security. And lastly, we characterized the properties that a secret sharing scheme has to have in order to be compatible with the key exchange mechanism and the secret signature scheme. This concludes our talk. Um, Thank you for your interest.